I think we can all agree that Grand Theft Auto V's map is one of the best detailed maps that has come out in video games in the last few years. Within the ever expansive map of GTA V, there are many lesser known locations, little details, artifacts, and even shipwrecks. While watching In Control Again's recent video about the secrets that lie beneath the surface of GTA V's ocean and the Alamo Sea, one secret that lies within the ocean caught and grasped my attention instantly. Off the northeastern coast of the map, in close proximity to Mount Gordo, underneath the water lays the wreck of a submarine, very similar to Bogdan's submarine from the Doomsday Heist Part 2 which is modeled heavily after a Russian Oscar II class submarine, the third largest submarine ever built by mankind, and also the third largest Russian submarine ever made. After seeing the submarine and the fashion in which it had appeared to sink, I instantly realized where the idea for this had come from. Occasionally within Grand Theft Auto V, Rockstar will add things into the game as a parody of real life, or perhaps a tribute. On August 12th, 2000, the Russian Navy began its largest naval exercise in over 10 years, Operation Summer X, involving several ships of all different sizes and a handful of submarines. Of those submarines, one in particular is more famed than all of the others, albeit for less than ideal reasoning. The Kursk is the submarine in question, you may have heard of it. After submerging and moving out into the Barents Sea north of Russia, the Kursk began to run through its exercises along with the rest of the accompanying ships. Early in the morning, two days later, on August 14th, the Kursk began to load and prepared to fire dummy torpedoes at another Russian naval ship. The loading crew began to prepare the torpedo to go into the tube, then something happened. During this time in the Russian Navy, a lot of the ships hadn't had proper maintenance in several years. Like I mentioned before, this was one of the largest naval exercises that Russia had done in the last 10 years, so a lot of the ships were not maintained, a lot of the crews were not trained to operate the ships properly and safely. Other ships in the area of the Kursk reported hearing an explosion beneath the surface of the water. Moments later, they then felt a second, much larger explosion from deep underneath the surface. Communication had been lost with the Kursk. Kursk. However, the Russian Navy was not concerned because the Kursk was considered unsinkable. However, after six hours, the Russian Navy grew skeptical because the Kursk's rescue buoy had never surfaced, which would instantly alert them had something gone wrong. It was not realized until later that the Kursk's rescue buoy had been disabled for unknown reasons. Finally, the Navy then initiated a search for the missing submarine. It took the Russian Navy 16 hours to locate the missing vessel. Of course, it was at the bottom of the sea. The front end of the submarine had been completely separated from the rest. Along these submarines, there are several rescue hatches. In case of something like this happening, the Russian Navy was equipped to go to the rescue hatches and latch on with a rescue vehicle. Over four days, the Russian Navy attempted to latch onto the rescue hatches that had been put onto the submarine, in case of an event like this ever happening. All of these attempts were unsuccessful. Eventually, NATO countries found out about what had happened and offered assistance. Russia denied that anything had occurred and refused. Inside the submarine at this point, there were several crew members locked inside of the bulkheads, alive, waiting, and hoping to be rescued. Eventually, after five days, Vladimir Putin authorized British and Norwegian dive teams to visit the site of the wreck to try to assist with the rescue mission of anyone inside the submarine. Eventually, British and Norwegian divers did open the ninth compartment's rescue hatch, only to find it flooded. It was later found out that 23 sailors were able to survive inside of the Kursk in the 6th to the 9th compartments, for an estimated 6 hours after the initial explosion. However, by the end of it, all 118 sailors aboard the Kursk would perish. On October 8, 2001, just over a year after its sinking, the Kursk would be brought from the Barents Sea floor back to the surface over 15 grueling hours. The Kursk would then be towed back to a dry dock where the bodies of the crew would be removed as well as the 22 granite supersonic cruise missiles. After seeing In Control Again's video, I felt compelled to tell this story. It's smaller details like this that make me appreciate this game more and more as time goes on. Whether or not this wreck was intentionally placed here to commemorate or make reference to the Kursk, I think it is very cool that Rockstar Games goes the extra mile to include interesting things like this into their games. Rest in peace to all of those aboard the Kursk. Your memory lives on.